Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Today I'm continuing to study the book of Acts, and I'm going to pick up where I left off last time, chapter 19, beginning with verse 18. Now, if you have not seen the previous studies on Acts, uh, all those videos are available, they're uploaded on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher, so please go back and watch it all from the beginning. All right, so I'm a KJV firstist, so I'll look at it first in the KJV, and maybe I'll look at it in the Amplified sometimes. Sometimes I find that to be helpful. So beginning with verse 18, And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them, and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Okay, this is uh, taking place uh, 20 years after Pentecost, uh, 10 years after Peter preached to Cornelius and the first Gentile believed. Um, it's uh, about 14 years past the conversion of Paul. It's the first missionary journey of Paul. And in the previous chapters, we've seen him going from uh, city to city. First, as was his custom, to go into the synagogues and preach to the Jews, tell them the good news that the Messiah has come, it's Jesus. And uh, he got basically three reactions from that group. Uh, some believed, some did not believe, and some not only did not believe, but wanted to kill Paul. In fact, in one place, they actually did stone him and leave him for dead. Uh, so uh, now we're in a, a, a city. I don't recall exactly where we are right now. Uh, let me see. Back in chapter nine, uh, chapter nineteen, verse one, it says it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and so I believe he's still in Ephesus. But regardless, he's um, um, these people believed. It says, and they uh, it says many believed and confessed their faith, and they showed their deeds. And by, by doing this, many of them also which used curious arts, brought their books together. So they had a lot of books on various um, uh, religions. Um, of course, uh, uh, all of these books were about false religions. And therefore, when now that they believe correctly, believing that there's one God and he came to the, into the world as the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and died for their sins and rose from the dead. Now that they're believing correctly, uh, they feel compelled to uh, give a sign that they, they've rejected their old way of thinking. This is true repentance. They've changed their mind from believing in these false religions uh, that they found in these various books. Uh, and they've rejected that. They've changed their mind no longer believing that, now believing correctly uh, in uh, the true God uh, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, it says that, I guess there's a lot of books and a lot of valuable books. This is, uh, it was 50,000 pieces of silver was the value of these books. Um, let me look at that in the Amplified. It says, and many of those who had practiced magical arts collected their books and throwing book after book on the pile began burning them in front of everyone. And they calculated their value and found it to be 50 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord concerning eternal salvation through faith in Christ was growing greatly and prevailing. There's a footnote here. Uh, let me see. D says the, the, the amount was, uh, the value of these books was. Um, uh, each each piece, or possibly a drachma, may have been about a day's wages. 
a day's wages. So let's say that a day's wages today is $100 a day or $200 or $300 a day, whatever your, your income is, a day's wages at that time, these books were worth roughly 50000 a day's wages. That's, that's a lot of money. That's a great uh, uh, value in these books. So I'm not sure if it's because the, each book was considered to be so valuable or if the, there was just that great, such a great number of books that it added up to that value. Okay, so now back to the KJV, verse 21. After these things were ended, Paul purported in the spirit, I'm sorry, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, after I've been there, I must also see Rome. So he's laying out his, his plans, uh, con continuing in this uh, missionary uh, uh, trip. Uh, verse 22, So he sent into Macedonia two of them that mis ministered unto him, Timothy Timotheus and Erastus. Timotheus is uh, more formal name of, of Timothy. Uh, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. So a season's probably a, a year. Um, so he stayed, but he sent Timothy and Erastus uh, into Macedonia. Uh, verse 23, And the same time there arose no small stir about that way, that the way was, was Christianity. Uh, before it was, the word Christian was coined in Antioch. It was we covered this in previous chapter. And that was at the uh, when um, Barnabas was sent from Jerusalem up to Antioch, where Saul was. The Apostle Paul at that time was still being identified as Saul, and uh, so Barnabas went up there to see Saul and tell him the good news that Peter had preached to the Gentiles and Gentiles who are believing now. And at that time, uh, uh, the, the, it says in the scriptures, that's when they first used the term Christian. Before that time, and even here now, uh, we hear Christianity referred to as the way. The, because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. So. The way to salvation is Jesus. He's the way to truth, to self, to life, life everlasting. Um, so it says, and and the same time there arose no small stir about that way. So there's a, a stir. That means there's a great controversy. Let me read that in verse twenty in the Amplified, verse twenty three. About that time there occurred no small disturbance concerning the way, that is, Jesus and Christianity. Verse 24 in the KJV, For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines to Diana, for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, Ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. So their income, their occupation, was based upon making these statues uh, of or for uh, the Diana. Uh, Diana was one of the many uh, so-called gods that were worshipped throughout the, the world at that time. So uh, they're, they're telling, they're, they're saying that Look, our income is based upon making these statues. Verse 26, Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone in Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. So Paul is saying there are no other gods. These are all false gods you're worshiping. You know, these are all idols, false idols. And he's, God is, I mean, Paul is denouncing that and uh, proclaiming that the truth, that 
There's one God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And But many people are believing. So these people who have their income determined by uh, people believing in Diana and buying these statues, they're really quite upset about what Paul has done, bringing so many uh, from from believing in Diana to now believing in Jesus. Verse 27, so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised, and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. <clears throat> so they're claiming that uh, this belief in this great goddess Diana is very widespread, and uh, their income is based upon so many statues, and that even the temple of the goddess Diana is being despised. People are not going to the temple. They've rejected Diana and instead put their faith in Jesus. Verse 28, And when they had heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. <clears throat> okay, let me read that portion in the Amplified. We're starting with verse 23. About that time, there occurred no small disturbance concerning the way, Jesus and Christianity. Now, a man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines of the goddess Artemis, or Diana, was bringing no small profit to the craftsmen. These craftsmen he called together along with the workmen of similar trades and said, Men, you are well aware that we make a good living from this business. You see and hear not only at Ephesus, but almost all over the province of Asia. This Paul has persuaded people to believe his teaching and misled a large number of people claiming that gods made by human hands are not really gods at all. Not only is there danger that this trade of ours will be discredited, but also that the magnificent temple of the great goddess Artemis, that's Diana, will be discredited, and that she whom all Asia and the world worship will even be dethroned and lose her glorious magnificence. When they heard this, they were filled with rage, and they began shouting, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Then the city was filled with confusion, and people rushed together as a group into the amphitheater, dragging along with them Gaius and Aristarchus, Macedonians, who were Paul's traveling companions. <clears throat> so... They are outraged, and they find these two companions of Paul, uh, Gaius and Aristarchus, and it looks like they're going to they're going to blame them you know, for this uh, uh, this this travesty that people are leaving the faith of Diana and believing in Jesus instead. So they're going to hold Gaius and Aristarchus responsible. Verse 30 in the KJV. And when Paul would have entered into in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. So Paul wanted to go in, talk to people, probably preach to them. And, and uh, uh, the, the, the disciples, they, they were begging Paul, Paul, please don't go in there. Don't go in there. They, get, they knew the danger. They knew what would happen if Paul himself went in there. Verse 31, And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him, that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing, and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, 
the Jews putting him forth, uh, putting him forward, and Alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of, Eph of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Uh, this was brought up in the, earlier in the chapter, I guess, and it, the, what was this object that fell down, this uh, image of Diana, uh, which fell down from Jupiter. Uh, they took it to be an image of Diana. We can speculate that what fell down from heaven was not a statue of Diana, but maybe a, uh, an asteroid or comet or something. Uh, verse 36, Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly, for ye have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of churches, nor yet blasphemies of your goddess. For Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man, the law is open, and there are deputies. Let them, let them implead one another. But if ye inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may give an account on this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. So it sounds like the uh, town clerk, town clerk is probably more like a mayor, uh, and he he's telling people, let's settle down. We don't want to have a big uproar over this because um, it, he's probably afraid he'll get back to Rome since this is this is a Roman province, and uh, they don't want the Roman government coming and uh, cracking cracking the whip on them because the things are disorderly. Let me read this portion in the Amplified verse. Uh, starting with verse uh, 30. Paul wanted to go into the pagan assembly, but the disciples would not let him. Even some of the Asiarchs, the, the officials, who were his friends, sent word to him and repeatedly warned him not to venture into the amphitheater. If Paul went there, it would have even escalated. It would have become even more of a the rage would have increased, and who knows what would have happened. Um, now, some shouted one thing and some another, for the gathering was in confusion, and most of the people did not know why they had come together. Some of the crowd advised Alexander to speak, since the Jews had pushed him forward, and Alexander motioned with his hand for attention and intended to make a defense to the people. But when they realized that he was a Jew, a single outcry went up from the crowd as they shouted for about two hours. To me, it's unclear if Alexander is a Jewish believer in Jesus or, or a Jew who still believed only in Judaism. Um, and, there, and it says they shouted, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. After the town clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, what person is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is the guardian of the temple of the great Artemis and of that sacred stone image of her which fell down from the sky? So, since these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and stay calm and not do anything rash. For you have brought these men here uh, who are neither temple robbers nor blasphemies of our goddess. So he's calming the crowd down and saying, uh, 
that, uh, who was it? Uh, who was it? Gaius and Aristarchus, Paul's companions. This town clerk or mayor is telling everybody, calm down, they haven't blasphemed Diana. Uh, they haven't robbed the, the temple. So he really wants to calm everything down. He knows the potential of this problem. If it gets out of hand, Rome will crack down on him. Um, so then, if Demetrius and the craftsmen who are with him have a complaint against anyone, the courts are in session and proconsuls are available. So he's saying, let's not be a, a mob. We have legal ways to deal with these things. Let's go through the courts. Let them bring charges against one another there. But if you want anything beyond this, <clears throat> it will be settled in the lawful assembly. For we are running the risk of being accused of rioting in regard to today's events. And since there is no reason for it, we will be unable to give an account and justify this disorderly gathering. And when, they, and when he had said these things, he dismissed the assembly. All right. So uh, that's a good point at the end of chapter 19 to end this one. I'll pick it up with chapter 20 uh, in the next study. Okay, so thank you for watching and bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.